Hello and welcome to the crescendo of our month of calligraphy with Spa Sweethearts. So we've learnt a letter, we've learnt some simple lettering styles, we've learnt some banners and now we're going to learn brush lettering. And brush lettering is a modern form of calligraphy. So there are a few examples here where I've written Spa Sweethearts like that. This is the crescendo, so that's a different way of colouring in there like that. And the WI's logo is, of course, what we're doing, inspiring women. And that is what we're going to learn how to do. Now, I said on the little introduction there, thicken every downstroke. And that is basically what it is. And I'm going to show you how to do that. I'll put this on here so that we can see while we're doing it. I'm just going to have a quick word about your materials. You need some paper. Any kind of paper will do, just cheap photocopy paper is absolutely fine. And some felt tip pens. You might also want a pencil and rubber as well while you're practicing, that is fine. I'm going to do it with these felt tip pens which are my favourites. Any kind of nib that you've got on there will do. You can get these kind of pens and I will just show you the end of that one. Um, so it's got kind of, it's called a brush lettering pen and you can see the edge of it. Personally, they are not my favourite. They're not as easy to control as the others. They create this brush lettering, but it's not for me. You can, however, do it with these teeny tiny ones as well. And I'll show you a little bit of that at the end. But it doesn't really matter because it's your skill and your hands rather than the felt tip pen that you're using. So we are, here is the alphabet written out but I'm going to show you how to write one word and you can all write the same word with me and practice that one. At the end, I will show you a little bit more about what to do with the alphabet so that you could write different messages. So I'll see you in a minute when we switch to the other camera. So we're going to write the word craft joined up like this. Okay, so I will just show you how we are going to write it. So you are keeping your writing really joined as you go. Now pay attention to that R because it's difficult isn't it? But other than that you are writing and I want you to just try and copy this word and the way that I'm doing it. Okay, we're not going to do too many extra embellishments to start with, we're just going to do that word like that. You need to practice that in your different writing to get it like that. It's joined up and you're slightly spaced out as if you've stretched it like that. So the next stage we're going to do is we're going to thicken our downstroke. And that's what makes it look really good. Okay, so if I think about it, I am going around and then I'm going down. And that's where I'm going to make it thicker, where I went down. But at this point, I'm going up. That one stays thin. And then I go down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Up. Down. Okay, so now we've got each stroke thickened. And now the next stage is we are going to colour it in. Okay, so just gently. And this is where if you're using your thicker pens, they have kind of already done this, but I just find this is much more controllable. So we're going to colour in every part of going down like this. And that has basically given you your brush lettering. So your upward strokes are thin and your downward strokes are thick. And that is what you have to practice over and over again there when you have that coloured in. And you will end up with it written like that. Okay. So the first way to embellish it is just to add a little bit of shadowing. So you have written your thing when you've got like that. And then we're going to do the same thing with our downstrokes. And you just need to choose which side you're doing. You could do the right or the left, and I'm going to go on the right. And I'm just going to put a slightly thinner line of a totally contrasting colour. So I've gone for a dark colour the first time, and now I'm just going to add a lighter colour on the, the right-hand side. Or you could do the left-hand side. It doesn't matter, just remain consistent 
on there. It's, a, it's important to just be kind of definite and bold with this. It looks better if you have a thick line than if you have a little apologetic line like that. Let's make sure we are proud of our pink writing. And we're putting that on there. And you, so you're just adding a little bit of shadowing. If you go too thick, don't worry, just make your other lines thicker. And if you do that in pencil first and you practice just that one word several times, you will get the hang of it. It does take a little bit of practicing. And I'm going to go underneath with that as well. But then you end up there with a slightly shadowed brush lettered word. So we've written that one word craft and if you practice that several times you will get the hang of that. Thickening your downstroke, that is what you're doing with all of that. So it's just really joined up. So I'm going to show you a few other ways to embellish that um, on here. So after you've written the word craft over and over again I would recommend that you try writing your name. And tomorrow at the live Zoom I will show you how to write your name, that's what we will be doing. So you can ask me about specific letters if you want to join us for that. Okay, now, so this is my name. I have chosen not to do a capital letter on this one and just keep it the same way. So I wrote it like that. It depends on your um, name. You have to be careful to make I's not look like E's there. And it depends on which letter you have. It's nice to have a little bit on the top of each one. But that's what I've done. And this time I put the shadow on the left hand side instead of the right hand side. But that's the same idea there. The rest of my family has been treated to this too. So Frank, our director, has his name unembellished there and that still looks really nice. With Paul, what I decided to do was co colour each one in a rainbowy way. I will just bring this a little closer so that you can have a look at that, director, is that right? Mm -hmm. Can they see that? Lovely. So that I've coloured in each one just in a rainbowy way. So with Albert here, who is my other son, I have gone round each one. So instead of doing the shadowing, I've done that where I've thickened the downstrokes for him. And then I've just gone round it in a thin um, black outline that's given a slightly different look to that one. Okay, craft group here has been written with blue, um, but we're still doing the same thing. They're nice and confident letters, but they're not with too much curliness and addition to that. That's just thickening the downstroke and then adding another color. So I'm just putting that there to remind you, I have written like this. So I have written each one and then gone down and coloured that in. However, you can go crazy with the curliness if you want. So on this one, we've written home sweet home and then at the end, just gone crazy with a swirl going downwards. That's something you can do. I've kept the letters similar here with two shades of pink. I've done a dark shade and a light shade halfway down and contrasting colours like that. In here, a little bit more subtle with the blue and the purple. So when you're thickening and doing your colouring, you don't need it to be just one colour. You can experiment in there, whether you go for the full um, rainbow look that I did with Paul, or whether you go for two colours. That's another really good way of doing it. These were done in pencil first, so that you don't end up with the um, felt it pen lines in the middle of it. So do it in pencil first and then rub out those kind of bits. Now on our other one with crescendo, it's a slightly different shadowing. If you look at this, when I've done the line on the um, right hand side, there is a space. So it's still writing the same way and going round, but we have left a space around each letter. That's possibly a little bit more complicated and we will have a look at that at the Zoom tomorrow. But having a little practice and doing it like that gives that double kind of look when you're doing that. You don't, however, have to write everything enormous. Okay, sometimes just a little bit of a practicing piece of paper where it's written nice and small like that. Looks really good too. You can write whole big quotes. This is a quote from one of my favourite books. Just nicely written out like that. If you were writing um, a menu or um, something for a wedding, 
don't embellish, don't do loads and loads of stuff, just thickening the downstroke will make it look really nice like that with different versions. I did craft in two different ways because I'm personally not keen on that kind of A for this writing. I think it looks much better like that. Okay. The only, the other thing that you can do is you can get your paints out because obviously what you're doing is emulating a brush. That's why it's called brush lettering. So what we're doing is, do, I did this with an actual brush going along and putting the darkness, dark shadows on with your um, watercolours. And this is another one done with watercolours like that. So I wrote my name in pencil and then I filled in with watercolours rather than felt tip pens. So if you're feeling like you are confident with painting, you can also experiment with different media like that. Okay. Now I am going to show you the alphabet just at the end or so that you can see it written down without any words, because depending on what your name is, you might need a different letter. On here, I've gone round the whole thing with the edges and that gives you a slightly different view. And now you know how to write fantastically for whatever you are doing. And I will see you soon for some more crafts.